story time with Gail. Welcome to today's episode of Story Time with Gone with the Gale. This episode was brought about by a Facebook group that I'm a part of, talking about the strangest things that ever happened to us when we were at work. About 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, it was probably closer to 15, I worked for a state government agency in a, a very old building. It was built in the 1890s. Um, this was in Pencil, back in Pennsylvania where I used to live. And my office was one half of what used to be the attorney general's interrogation room when it was in my building. Um, My office was really not much bigger than a closet. It had no windows. The door was over three inches thick and pretty much blocked out all sound. Um... It was a pretty solid office, even though it was half of what had been one big room at one point. Um, And the office, it was nice. um, But as I said, the building was near the Capitol, and it was very old. It was built in the 1890s. And I liked my office because I had privacy. I didn't have to share. It was dark. It was cold. It was always cold in my office. Um... It actually got at one point to 52 in my office. It was that cold. So um, I loved my office because of the privacy. And the first incident was that I'd come in and every once in a while, things would be different than what I left them the night before. And I had always kind of written it off thinking I was tired when I left or maybe, just maybe, um, you know, I didn't put them where I thought it was. I mean, really, what what would be the logical explanation? So my friend, a couple of my friends that I worked with, we kind of had this running joke. My office was haunted. I mean, the building was, you know, over a hundred years old. It could be haunted, right? So one day, um, my office, as I said, was basically not much bigger than a storage closet. And my desk was a U shape. And the U, um, was open to the door and then it went I had on each side of the office was um, desk and then the bit, part where my computer was was at the bottom of the U and at the bottom of the U I had my my computer was in the center and off to one side was my phone and on the other side I had some other utensils I used on a regular basis so The chair, because my office being so small, there was only one place for a guest chair to go, and that was at the end of the U, right next to the door. So, like, when you open my door, there is just enough space for the door to clear the edge of this chair. In fact, if somebody was sitting in the chair and somebody else opened the door, the person in the chair would have to move their legs so that you could actually finish opening the door. It was that small. But at the same point, the desk was long. So if we were sitting at this far end, it's probably about five feet to where my um, to where my my computer and phone were. So we were sitting there one day. My friend and I were sitting at the end of the um, desk, and we were working on a project together. And we kind of realized the room felt a little funny. And at the same time, we both looked up and glanced at my phone. And the cord of my phone basically just kind of lifted up. You know, something kind of like this. Kind of lifted up off the desk, moved over the edge, dropped down. Now, a regular phone cord would go back and forth, you know, until it stopped. This went back, forth, and then stopped dead center. It never shook. It never dangled. It just came out, came down. Went back, forth, and then stopped dead in the center. There was no vibration, nothing. It was as if somebody reached out with their hand and stopped it from swinging. My friend looked at me, and I looked at her, and we looked at the phone again. We didn't say a word. We both just stood up, walked out of my office, shut the door, and went to the common room and went, What the heck was that? It was, it was, you know, you read stuff, but to see it that close to you, in front of your face, all at once, it was it was actually kind of scary because you didn't expect that to happen. The second incident I had in my office, um, 
I was alone, which kind of made it a little bit scarier. It was towards the end of the day, and I'd been working um, on a project at my computer at the bottom of the U, and my phone was right next to me on my left. And then next to that, I had a stack about this thick of paper. It was a pro the project I was working on. It had, um, I had a lot of re printed research um, sitting on my desk, and I do wear glasses, for, for distance. So I had taken them off when I came back from break and I set my glasses down top, top of the paper. So I had, you know, this stack of papers about this high, maybe 20, 30 sheets of paper, um, sitting there with my glasses on top. And I was typing away on my computer, you know, I'm just typing. And all of a sudden I see something out of the corner of my eye and I see something move. I'm like, wait a minute. I, you know, the phone's here, the cord's here, there's nothing moving. I turn and I look, and the stack of papers with my glasses starts sliding down my desk. Now, before you say it was probably the air vents or whatever, the air vents were behind my computer. They were along the far wall. You know, it's, my desk was about three feet wide, as a normal desk would be. And then the vents were on that side, and they went straight up. It was an old, like, radiator kind of blower system. So whenever the air turned on, it just went straight up the wall. I'd had paper sat there all day and nothing happened. So for, and moreover, it wasn't running at the time because I, I'm a logical person. That's what I looked for at first. So, you know, nothing's moving. My, my door, but the door to my office is locked. And I just look over and I just watch it slide down my desk about a good foot and a half, two feet, and then just stop. And it wasn't like, you know, the glasses slid and then the papers. It's as if somebody took the sides of each pa of the papers and slid the whole thing as one down. If it was blowing, you know, you would have seen the edges of the paper move or, you know, it shouldn't have moved anyway with my glasses on top. So that I cannot explain to you. The third thing that happened in my office um, was probably the only thing that truly scared me um, because, you know, things moving in your office, even if you're sitting there isn't really that scary. It's not going to hurt you. Um, but as I said, my door was very thick and it locked my office every day. And the most that anybody would have come is if the lights would have been left on, if there's something running in my office, security would have just unlocked the door, turned off whatever it was and closed the door. So I had this, uh, it was like a schoolhouse clock, you know, the kind of, kind of with a pendulum that swung back and forth and hung on the wall um, about the chair next to my desk and it hung there for year for years I brought it it was plastic but it, it looked like wood it chimed on the hour it was a nice little thing and you know it wasn't expensive but I liked the clock you know it kept me company I was in my office alone most of the time so um, I was I, like I said it, I think it had hung there for about two years and it was on a very thick old nail that was probably fairly original. I mean, it was really in the wall. That's the only reason I even hung it where I did. Originally, I had wanted to hang it above my desk, above the, the air vents, but the nail that was there wasn't strong enough. Um, so I used the nail that was big and strong by the door to hang my clock. So it hung there two years. wasn't a problem. And right after the whole, the last two incidents, it was, all these these three incidents probably happened within a two month time period. So the last incident that happened, it was again on that same side of my office. Um, I came in one morning and I found the clock shattered across the floor. Now here's the thing. The nail didn't come out of the wall. The nail was still in the wall, same place. It was still just as sturdy as it always had been. But the clock was on the floor, it was in about seven or eight pieces. It was destroyed. There was no saving it. So there's no logical reason that that clock would be on the floor and broken. I mean, the only people that would have had access to my office was security, and there's no reason that security would ever have come into my office and broken the clock because it couldn't have fallen off the floor. So how my clock ended up on the floor, I don't know. This last story I'm about to tell, I'm going to post a picture of the foyer where it occurred so you can get kind of an idea how big this foyer was. Um, the 
officer, the security officer I'm referencing, pretty much would have sat about where the camera was to give you a frame of reference. So I'm gonna put that picture here and then you can get an idea of what we're looking at in the next story. The final story I'm going to share is not mine, but it was told to me by a good friend. Um, he worked in the same building as me. Um, this happened roughly around the same time my incidents happened a few months later. Um, one of the, sh shall we see supervisors, I'm not going to give his actual title away because then you'll know exactly where we worked. And as it's a government agency, they kind of frown on all this stuff and they deny that any of this stuff happens um so I and I it's also a public building so I really don't want people traipsing through looking for this kind of stuff um would be kind of nice to the people that are st still working there but one of the supervisors had passed away he was a very nice man in fact um he played a big part in getting the building that we worked in refurbished. So he was very, his heart was really attached to this building and he had <clears throat> sadly passed away and they had part of his funeral at the building to honor him. And this happened maybe a month after he passed. So my friend was a security guard and he was sitting at his post near the foyer of the building. And he said this particular supervisor every morning when he was alive would come in get a newspaper, walk across the foyer to his office, go into his office, sit down and read his paper every morning. So this particular morning, he was sitting there and minding his post and keeping an eye on the doors. And out of the corner of his eye, he saw some movement. And he turned and saw the supervisor walking across the foyer. And he turned and said, good morning, sir. And he kept walking. And then after he turned back and he looked, went to his own newspaper for a moment, he realized that he had, the gentleman had passed away the week before. In fact, his funeral had just been a few days before. So he got up and walked around the corner and looked. There was nobody in the office. The door was still locked. The lights were still dark. You know, nobody, none of his support staff had been in. But he had clearly seen the supervisor walk across the way just as he did every single morning when he worked there. So there was some crazy stuff going on in that building. Thanks for watching. And if you like story time, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Thanks.